Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining. This is David Politis. I'm the founder and CEO at Better Cloud. And today, you're joining the webinar, Secure Your Data, Where to Start When There Are One Million Threats. If you'd like to ask questions throughout this webinar, please join our Slack community. It's betterit.cloud. This is a community where we have approximately 2,000 IT professionals who share best practices um, and uh, uh, who, who converse there about uh, various topics, and, and you can ask questions there throughout the webinar. So we're going to get started. Um, we're just waiting for a couple more people here. Um, okay, so when you look at what's happening in your environment today, you have threats coming at you from all angles. And we're talking about threats. These are targeted attacks. These are just more broad malware attacks. You've got denial of service attacks. You have just, there are threats and there are exposures all across your network. It's, it's really reached a tipping point, especially in the last year, I'd say year and a half, we've seen a real increase in these kinds of breaches, exposed data exposures, uh, leakage of data. There's been a huge, huge increase in the last uh, really 12 to 18 months. And if you look at any headline, what everyone says is that it's getting worse. It's it's by the day, by the week, by the month, it's, it is getting worse. And again, it, it's across everywhere in your environment. Um, it's across the world. It doesn't matter what size your organization is. Um, it doesn't matter what industry you're in. This is hitting everybody. And when it does, it has a real impact on your business. We've seen this with some really high profile types of breaches, uh, sensitive data being leaked, PCI issues, um, and this is just the beginning. I mean, now you start with G GDPR regulation coming May 25th. There is the, the, the challenges, the risks to businesses, it's, it's tremendous. Um, and when these breaches happen, it impacts business. Of course, we can only see this um, publicly with, with public companies and really see what it can do to a business. Um, but it, it it can be pretty bad. Um, and, and you see it with private companies as well. Here you see, for example, BitPay. Um, this was a couple of years ago where that happened. Um, and the impact on that business for a relatively small company to lose $1.8 million, it's, it's massive. And that was a very well-designed spear phishing attack. Um, you see companies like Smartsheet who are filing to go public now. And one of the the items in their S1 where they talk about threats to their business is if their security measures are breached or customer data is compromised, uh, customers may stop using the platform and, and there may be big liabilities that, that have to be paid out. So it's, it's having a massive impact. And for you, this is all coming down. This is IT's role. This is IT's job is to take care of this. Of course, in many of your organizations, it depends on your size, but there may not be a dedicated security organization. There may not be a CISO in, in your in your company. Um, and, and maybe there is, but even then, uh, the security, the day-to-day -day security of the applications being used and the, the endpoints, that really, in most cases, comes back to IT. And so you are responsible for securing these environments. And I have a feeling that, uh, and, and speaking with many of you and speaking with our community, you probably feel like this. You probably feel like you're playing a game of whack-a-mole and with, with a lot more serious consequences. And I've heard this, this exact analogy. Actually, a customer said to me, this, use this exact analogy that they feel like it's whack-a-mole. Um, you, 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 you solve this problem and then another one arises and you solve this problem and secure this and another one arises. And then a new technology is brought into the environment and then, um, you acquire a company or what, whatever it may be, but you're just constantly, um, dealing with these changes in your environment, these attacks, these breaches. Um, and, and it's really, really challenging. So, you know, when, when you look at all the, the, the challenges and all the risks and all the exposures, my assumption is that you, you're most likely following best practices. I mean, there, there is a 
playbook for how to secure uh, an IT environment. There is a pretty, there's standard operating procedure that if you came into an organization, you most likely, if you've, if you've worked in IT anywhere else, um, if you've, you most likely are going to come in and have a playbook. You're, you're going to understand all the elements uh, that you need to secure. Now, this playbook has, of course, evolved over time because as new technologies have been introduced into the workplace and into the IT environment, uh, all of a sudden, there are new paradigms and there are new challenges. And so I, if I go through kind of the, the evolution, if you will, of this playbook, it most likely looks like this. You're probably starting with securing your endpoints and your servers. And this has been around forever, security for endpoints, servers. It's it's obviously necessary. Um, as we know, as we just saw from that poll, a lot of the most sensitive data is still living uh, on premises and 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 having security for, for that is key. And very it's pretty fundamental actually. And it's been like that for decades. And and so that's the core. Then you move out and you go to the next uh, layer, and now you're talking about securing the network and putting in web-based security proxies and really understanding what is happening with the traffic coming in and going out of your network. And um, that is, you know, the, again, something that's pretty known entity, been around, been, let's say, best practice, been standard operating procedure for a while. Then you go a little bit further out and, and people started bringing in mobile devices into their corporate, uh, you know, to store corporate data. That happened in the early 2000s, 2000, really two, three, four. Um, and so about 13, 14 years ago, you start seeing the, the rise of the mobile devices in the workplace. And then with that paradigm came a new set of security solutions uh, for the mobile devices. And, and you've got the MDM solutions, the EMM solutions. And then there's been this interesting evolution as you look at the rise of companies like Okta or OneLogin. Um, Okta, you know, really started 2009, picked up traction 2013, 2014, where you're you're really starting to secure the identity, the cloud identity layer, really, um, and and that access to the applications that are outside of your network, the the SaaS applications, and so. That's all become, I'd say, uh, not every organization has all these pieces in place perfectly, but I would say that that's in the playbook. And, and that's become a pretty standard way of, of, of building out your security infrastructure. But when you look at that, really, you, you can really only secure at each of those layers, you can really only secure what you can see. And what you can see is determined by the technology, the technological approach, the, the method, if you will, the security method, as we call it here, um, for that particular layer. So for example, if you look at endpoints and, and server level security, the way that that's deployed is through agents. And those agents can give you specific visibility into activity on those devices, on those servers. Um, it's all local, activity. It's it's what is happening on this particular device. And it gives you not only visibility, but control over that it, it, you, to, to determine, um, you know, the lockout time, to determine, you know, to be able to wipe that device, to be able to protect from uh, malware. So all of that is determined based on the, the method that, that you're using to secure that. You go to the next net level, uh, a network level, and you start looking at, at the proxying and, and sending your traffic through some third party um, to inspect that traffic and control that traffic and encrypt that traffic or decrypt that traffic. Um, and at that, you're seeing the, you're doing packet inspection and you're looking at that traffic as it's coming in and out of your network. And that's going to give you very different kind of visibility. Um, that that's going to tell you where people are going, where traffic is flowing to, where traffic is coming from. Um, is there any uh, is there any issue with kind of uh, um, malware from websites? So it's going to give you a different view of the world and different level of control. Then you go to the next level. You're talking about mobile devices. 
now you're using APIs uh, or these vendors that you're working with are using APIs for the different OSs. And now, now you can see what is happening on the particular device. What is the firmware running? What is the, the config on that device? Password settings, obviously very, very similar to the endpoint server level, except this is was came later um, and, and really very specific to mobile devices, which apps are being installed, so on and so forth. So it tells you what is happening and what the user behavior on that device now is. And again, all of this critical. And then, you get to this next layer as the perimeter continued to extend out. And now the perimeter and identity just, it didn't have to do with only local devices, local applications. It had to extend out to the cloud. Um, that's where, again, the IDAS vendors, the, the Octas and the one login come in. And now they're using SAML, OAuth, and they're controlling access to these various applications. Can a user get to the application or not? And that's that's what it's, you know, are they trying to log in? Are they not trying to log in? Password strength, so on and so forth, two-factor. But there's a question. There's a big question, which is, as we see this shift, like we saw in that poll, as we see the shift from on-prem to cloud-based infrastructure and ultimately to SaaS, which is where we're going, as we see that shift, there's a question of how do you see entitlement changes, for example, when someone is changing the sharing settings on a file? How do you see that? That can't be seen at the device level. That can't be seen at the network level. That can't be seen uh, at the identity level. So how do you see that? How do you see when there's... Uh, something's been configured inside of an application, a setting has been changed, um, a, a, any kind of configuration has been changed, how do, you, how do you see that and how do you secure that um, when none of those layers that you have in place have visibility into that? How do you know when there's specific type of data leaving the organization and, and leaving the the infrastructure, the SaaS infrastructure you have in place and the applications you have in place. How do you see any of this information? It's at a completely different layer. And that is the application level or the application layer. And in order to see and secure that layer, it requires a different method. This method is APIs, like we talked about at the mobile device level, at the identity level, now, at the application level, it requires a different set of APIs, but still an API-based approach. And with the API-based approach, everything I just said, all of that is now visible. And if done the correct way, you can control all of that. And so now you can start seeing all the entitlement changes, the user and admin activity within the applications, and, and you can start identifying when there's improper configs, when data is being leaked, you can start identifying that. So this is the layer, for anyone who's familiar with Better Cloud, this is the layer that we operate in. And we clearly feel strongly that this layer is the future of security. It's the new frontier for IT security, is the application layer. And that's because, as you see from this image, that's where your files are living. That's where your users are making changes. All of a sudden, we've given a lot of control in these SaaS applications to users. Um, that's very purposeful. That's, that's to drive collaboration. That's to drive innovation. That's to give users just more control of their day-to-day -day work without having them to ask to open up tickets for things. But with that comes this sprawl. It, it, the amount of data, the amount of settings, the, uh, the, the sensitivity of a lot of this information, the fact that we're collaborating with people who don't work inside of our organizations, inside of those applications. When you look at all of those challenges and you see all of that data and you see these all these new attack vectors, all these new data leakage points, when you see that, that is the new, that's the next frontier. The perimeter is no longer 
your office, your network. The perimeter is no longer your dev the mobile devices. The perimeter, it has extended and extended and extended. And now the perimeter are these major SaaS platforms and you need to secure that perimeter. If you look historically at how that has been done, and how people, because of course, SaaS applications have been around for a long time, really reached critical mass about 2014, to really when Office 365 was released, 2013, 14, Dropbox for Business, um, Slack, it's, it, that's really when we started reaching the tipping point. And of course, people started looking and saying, you, your peers started saying, hey, where, how am I gonna secure these applications, my users are demanding them. Um, my, I'm having to go through this quote unquote digital transformation. Now, now, how do I secure these applications? And at the time, really 2014, 15, the only real solution that was available in the market was network-based. That was the only place that you could go to, to semi-solve this problem. But it, it was, it, it was, it is, like fitting a, a square peg in a round hole. That is not really the correct way to be securing SaaS applications because the context and the visibility of what you can see coming through the network is really a minuscule portion of what you need to see in order to truly secure these SaaS applications. And then you look at some people's approach let, let's call our the, the, the CASB approach to this. Um, and you start proxying traffic from this SaaS platform, which has been built to run in the cloud, which has been built to drive collaboration. And you start changing the user's behavior in those applications. You start creating a new uh, point of failure for those applications. You start encrypting traffic and dropping it into the database of these platforms encrypted. And now if something happens, all that data is unusable. When you start look, that is not, that is taking an old technology and trying to use an old security method and technology on a completely new paradigm. And that does not, that doesn't work. So when you, now, now, again, there are elements of that, I should say, there are elements of that that are valuable. There are elements of that that should be in place. Mostly, it gives the visibility into shadow IT that you otherwise would have a hard time getting visibility into. For shadow IT, that makes sense. But if you are a SaaS-powered workplace, if you're a digital workplace, whatever you want to call your, yourself, and you're really running SaaS applications as your mission-critical application storing all of your, your most sensitive information, then the foundation, the hygiene, if you will, the operational hygiene is identity and access management. So again, talking about an Okta or a one login, um, that, is the, that is foundational. You need to control who has access to what. That, in my opinion, and I believe in any in most people's opinion, that would be hard to argue that that is where this all starts. If you're running SaaS applications, if they're IT sanctioned, if 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 these are again mission critical, then the first thing that needs to happen is there needs to be some identity solution in place, and that identity solution needs to control who has access two applications, period. The next layer after that is all the detail inside of the application, is all the inspection and the constant monitoring of what's happening inside the application. Because now, the same way you had to be on an endpoint, on a server, in line in the network, on the device, the same way you needed to do all of that, you need to be in the application itself in order to provide this kind of security. And the only way to do that is through APIs. So once you are inside of the application via their native APIs, now you can start controlling settings, configurations, entitlements, authorizations, uh, permissioning. You now have control and visibility into all of that. That is the only way to really get that level of visibility and control. You have to go to the source of the data. So this is the pyramid that we see evolving from foundational to, to less critical um, around SaaS security. And the API approach 
is the core. It's the foundation. You need to be connected in at that level in order to have the kind of control that you are used to in your environment and that you need in your environment. So what we did is let's talk, of course, you know, again, we're talking about better cloud uh, expertise here. Um, not necessarily everything we're talking about today, as you've heard, uh, we don't solve all these problems. For example, the single sign-on, the, the identity problem, we don't solve that. Um, so we don't solve necessarily all the issues that we're bringing up, but I wanted to share this with you because this is a recent poll that we did of our community. We polled a, a large number of IT professionals and 1,500 responded to the questions. And one of the questions we asked was, what's your biggest concern about managing and securing SaaS apps? So let's go through some of the answers. So the number one theme, the number one challenge, end user behavior, that was the number one issue. It was, we saw that a lot. The number two, data loss and leakage. And number three, shadow IT. So these were the three items that came up. These were the recurring themes, the top recurring themes about what are the biggest challenges to managing and securing your SaaS applications. So first, we'll look here at a quote. This is a quote from someone who filled out the, the survey, an IT manager at a 250 person construction company in the UK. So I'll let you read this. And what I thought was interesting here is the last section, the last sentence. There is still an all too common problem of people putting convenience before security. Again, recurring theme. What we're seeing is that we've, we've brought these SaaS applications into the workplace to change how we work. Great paradigm shift. I am the biggest believer of it in the world. I believe that it reduces friction in the workplace. It, it really does drive innovation. I, I believe in that. But with that, we've created all this convenience and it's really easy to create this, to do this, to share this, to forward this. And all of a sudden, from a security perspective, there are a whole new set of challenges that we have to deal with. And end users, unfortunately, are driving a lot of that. So here are some of the threats that we heard from the survey. So this is pulled from the survey. We saw people sharing data with external parties. This is becoming a bigger and bigger thing around SaaS applications. You can now add guests to Slack channels, single channel guests, multi-channel guests to, to Slack channels. You've got email distribution lists with external members, which has been the case forever, but in a lot of cases, users have more control over those distribution lists being created and, and who's on that distribution list. You've got people being added into external partners, being added into Salesforce instances. You've got um, you've got people who are working as contractors and sharing information with their personal Gmail account and, and getting all the, the information in their personal Gmail account. You've got people who, you know, um, are clicking on suspicious links. This is a big, obviously big problem, all the phishing attacks that, that, that uh, and we've seen what that, can, what that can do and the kind of impact and, and it can have on a business. Um, people not understanding what is a suspicious link, um, using the same password for every single application call, you know, just password. Uh, there's so much, um, having too much admin access, we've seen organizations Actually, we've seen this recently um, with some customers, smaller customers who who rolled out Salesforce was rolled out by the sales ops group and then all of a sudden given to IT. And when it got to IT, every single user in Salesforce was a super admin. Uh, we've seen that in a number of different areas. When you look at these shadow IT kind of applications that can hand it off to IT, um, we, we see so many challenges. And some of this is users... Um, it's not the user's fault. Some of this is the applications can be complicated. They can be confusing. You think that you're sharing something with your entire organization and actually you're sharing it on the public internet. Uh, sometimes you may feel like I need to give someone super admin access to do this certain task because I don't really understand how to delegate out more granular roles. So there's a whole host of reasons why this is happening. Um, it's also because end users are busy. They're doing their work every day and um, they're not thinking necessarily about security all day, every day. So there's a lot of challenges. Now, when we ask our community, what are some of the things you've done to fix 
this. What we've seen is, and something we've done in, internally, I, I love this one, is phishing your own employees. Our security team came up with a phishing attack and ran the phishing attack against our employees to test what the, the, the number of clicks we'd get on the links, how many people would give up their credentials. Um, and we've run that over a period of the last two years. We've done three or four of those phishing attacks and, and we just continued them until we finally got to a point where no one was clicking on the link and everyone was forwarding phishing emails to the security group. So things like that, you, you can start looking at, like we discussed, the operational hygiene, if you will, the foundational, uh, uh, the foundation of the pyramid that we showed before, put in place a password management tool at minimum, if not a full identity solution, and and really make sure that that's in place and being used correctly to control access. And then, uh, my opinion, a big piece of this is a change in your role as IT. IT now has to be in front of end users in a lot more often educating a lot more often, evangelizing the importance of security and, and being conscious of what you're doing in these applications, training people on the changes. Oh, there was a new feature added to this application that we're using, and there could be an issue when you use it. There, there Sometimes people make a mistake and do X, Y, Z. Please watch out for that. Uh, there's a lot of work that's required, educating when someone shares something. Actually, something that you do in Better Cloud that, that a lot of customers like is if someone does something wrong, maybe you don't necessarily take brute force and just remove the sharing or shut down their account or shut down their access to an application, but instead you send them a customized message explaining to them what they did and why that, that violated corporate policy. So there's a whole host of ways in which you can invest here and improve this, but this is going to be, we're human beings. This is going to be always one of your biggest risks. The next was data loss and leakage. So, this is a CISO. This is a quote from a CISO at an 800 person company in California, real estate company. And what I think is important here is the last piece. Data leakage or loss via features capabilities that we did not properly secure or import right here, we're not aware of. That we're not aware of this, this, this is about the blind spots. This is about the challenge of when you've got this sprawl, and you've got different applications and you've got different settings and you've got different types of data living in these applications, There's, it's almost impossible to know everything. It, you, you, you can't, it's, it's literally impossible. And the, the, where these threats, the big ones, again, at least the big ones that we've seen is of course, anything with files. Files, shifting files from file servers in your office, on-prem, to cloud-based file storage and file sharing and file collaboration and file creation, that paradigm is probably the paradigm that is causing the most problems. What we see in terms of people who have incorrect settings at a global level and therefore all files or all files by these people or all files like this are being shared in a way that you don't want, um, that is rampant. We're seeing that everywhere. Or people who think I'm gonna put in this file, I'm gonna upload this file that has um, some, some information, I'm gonna share it with this contractor, but I trust that contractor to keep that file safe. But in reality, that contractor goes and shares it with 10 other people. Um, or malicious. We've seen people going and downloading. If we look at the Uber Waymo story, somebody going and downloading out of drive, I don't know how many thousands of files and taking them with them. Or even more blatant, which we've seen, which sometimes surprises me that people do this, is taking files and maliciously and purposely sharing those files with their personal Gmail. Or maybe even we saw an, an, a, a, one a customer recently where a, a, a person who, who was being fired shared three very sensitive files with their new work email address at one of the competitors of the, their previous company. And we're seeing all of that. The Another major challenge, I, I think if we were to ask within this list, files is definitely number one. But number two 
is ex-employees who still have access to data. We're seeing examples where people have been gone from an organization for two years and were in very senior roles and still have access to all corporate data. We're seeing examples where people who, uh, I know example of a CFO who was at a company that was preparing to go public and left the company right before it went public and all the way through the public offering had full access to their Dropbox environment that had all the information for the public offering, which is a big problem. And if that was identified by the auditors before they went public, most likely they would not have been able to go public. And so there are, there, there, again, it is the sprawl. This is not your fault. In many cases, this is not malicious. In some cases it is, but in many cases it's not. It is, it's overwhelming. There are too many, back to the, the quote, there's so much that you just can't be aware of. You, the visibility is, is extremely challenging to have visibility manually across all these applications. Logging into every application and running a report and then writing some script into the API and then, but then a different one for this application and then sending it on to some other person on your team, but you have to give temporary access to that application. That is just not sustainable and not scalable. And so, you know, in terms of how to fix this, the, the number one thing is as best as you can centralize all this information and just understand, audit what exists. That is, I'd say knowing is more than half the battle in this case. And just understanding what is out there, where is my potential exposures, um, what, which application or applications do I need to really focus on securing. All of that is, in my opinion, that's the first thing. The second is just getting some processes and policies put in place that are consistent, that are documented, and that are shared across the organization. And so things like offboarding, it's surprising how often offboarding is being done the way that it was five years ago just because that's how it's been done. And no one stood up and said, hey, do you know that we're offboarding people the way we did five years ago? And since then, this, 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 and this have changed. And we've gone through this transformation and we have these new applications. And we, that is, again, this is, we have thousands of customers. This is all we've been doing. It's all I've been doing for more than seven years now. And we, this is just recurring. We see the same pattern over and over and over again. This, the, these kinds of things, there's policies that, um, Maybe IT has some policies, but those policies haven't been communicated to the broader organization. Maybe they haven't been agreed upon. Uh, maybe IT doesn't actually have the authority because it hasn't been agreed upon to remediate any of that. And so it's really important to, to be on the same page as the rest of the organization um, and, and make sure that these policies are in place um, and you have an ability to see what's out there um, and, and to see all this information. And then shadow IT. And this is a little bit back to the end user comment here where really we've put a lot of hand, a lot of control and a lot of power in the hands of end users. And every single application, at least major, major, major platform has a marketplace and has people building integrated applications. And that's become the norm. Everything, anything you can imagine from the Salesforce App Exchange, to the Google Apps Marketplace, Chrome Web Store, to, uh, you know, Zendesk Marketplace, to, I mean, doesn't matter. Every single application has this, any major platform. And when you do, there's a lot of challenges because people are now, even if they are installing a non-core application, maybe even something that doesn't ever need to be IT managed, in many cases, they're giving it access to the core applications that have the most sensitive information. And so some of the threats and some of what we've seen here, uh, I think everyone's maybe not, but but maybe aware of what happened last year um, with the Chrome extension that was getting installed and getting full access um, to people's contacts and to people's uh, Google Drive um, and, and then using that to send spam messages and, um, it was it was pretty bad. Um, you know, we've seen applications where people are going, buying these applications, installing them, and putting them on a corporate credit card, and never there was really no cost 
control over that. Um, we've seen where um, you know these applications are actually rogue applications to collect data for other purposes. Um, and so there's there's a lot of challenges. And really, to me, it comes down to understanding why is this even happening? And to fix it, you have to understand why it's happening. And I, I believe one of the big reasons it's happening is that IT is still not seen in many organizations as a quote unquote friendly org that's going to allow them to use these applications. And so what happens is we, again, I've seen these, I've seen some pretty scary stories of big orgs that say we are going to use OneDrive, for example, and the, a certain team in maybe in some cases finance or M&A or partnership says, you know, we're not going to use OneDrive and we're just going to go buy our own Dropbox instance and put everything in Dropbox. And that's going to happen. <laughs> the reality of the situation is that is happening whether you like it or don't. Again, we've been doing this for a long time. We have a lot of information and we know that this is happening in every organization except when IT creates a very different culture and says, hey, we want to help you and we want to help you be successful and we want to help you use the applications that make you the most productive. So here is our process for bringing an application to IT to be sanctioned, for us to run the security review on, for us to help purchase in a centralized way. And if, if users feel like that is a, an option and then that's a path for them, then the opportunity there is massive to change the way your organization works and therefore the breaches and the exposures and the attack vectors in your organization. We see organizations where uh, an engineering group deploys Slack and that and IT says, no, Slack cannot be used in our organization. And the engineering team uses it and then they bring on another team and now the, the QA team is on there and then they bring in the product team and then that brings in the marketing team. And then all of a sudden, this is true, we've seen this, all of a sudden you've got 90% of the org in Slack and but no one is running the offboarding process for Slack because no one really thinks about that except for IT. And so no one's running the offboarding and we've seen organizations where 2,000 employees, 1,000 former employees, and all 3,000 of them are in Slack still because no one offboarded anyone. And so the sooner you, you, you take control and manage these applications and sanction these applications, I'm not saying all of them, obviously. There's going to be ones you don't want to do. But that's going to make a big, big, big difference um, in your organization. I, I, I'm, again, seeing it across the board um, and you have sensitive data if you are not if you don't run an organization like that um, and this may not be your decision by the way again not necessarily your fault this may be coming down from the ceo or the cio or cto um, but this is an important topic to discuss because just to say hey these applications uh, are never going to get used and we're only going to use the sanctioned one that's just that's turning a blind eye um, and it's going to happen so that's just some of the of the threats. This is these are quotes. These are quotes from the survey of other threats that were mentioned by your peers in that survey. And you see everything that we talked about on the top left here. You see the unknown unknowns, right? It's it's the blind spots. It's the things you didn't know were there. It's the fact that you didn't know that this application was in use. It was the fact that you didn't know that this app you knew the application was in use, but you didn't know people were storing that kind of data in the application. It's the fact that you didn't understand that users have the ability to forward their corporate email from their Gmail accounts, and you didn't know that setting existed. So now you have 20 people forwarding their corporate email to their personal Gmail accounts with sensitive information. It's things like GDPR, new requirements, new regulations that are new. They're new. No one knows. No one is the expert. And so how do I learn about GDPR? How do I understand what I need to put in place? Um, it's proliferation of tools. Like, again, I've mentioned, it's just the sprawl. It's the number of applications that are in use. It's it's the fact that you no longer have all your data on a one file server that's in the closet on-prem that you have control over. Now you have all these integrate, integrated applications and your Dropbox files are living in Slack, but also in Salesforce and your Drive files are living over here. And, you know, that's a big, that's a big challenge. Um, and so there's so much. Um, you know, inability to automate uh, specific actions and, and, and multi-platform actions and workflows. I mean, automation 
is going to be key. Automation is it's a requirement. If you don't, if you can't figure out how to automate some of the work you're doing, then you there's no way you can keep up with this. I've heard this from a couple of CIOs who have said, I'm noticing that my challenge coming up now is that in order to do all the work required on a day-to-day -day basis in terms of monitoring, in terms of doing just day-to-day -day work, tasks, that's going to require my team to quadruple in size, which of course I'm never going to get the budget to do. So therefore, either the group quadruples in size, which it doesn't, or you automate work, which is definitely where I would invest, um, or you just leave all of it to be done or not done, depending on how much time you have. And that's obviously not going to work long term. So we know, we understand, we're very empathetic. I mean, this is this is all we've been talking about for years. And, and it's you're, we're starting to see this stuff come to fruition. And the, the, the unfortunate piece is that users are, you know, it's for, fortunate, unfortunate, but users are loving these SaaS applications. Users are loving this change, this, this, this new way of working. And it's, it's a big win for organizations. The unfortunate piece is it's again coming down to you. Uh, IT ultimately ends up being the one responsible for all of this. And um, whether fair or not, I'm, I'm not sure. It's a big opportunity for IT, in my opinion. And we've seen uh, IT leaders that we work with really move up the, the, the ladder um, because of the way they've attacked this and because of their ability to, to control these environments and, um, and, and, and explain that and explain the wins to their organizations. But this is a big challenge. And so for us today, what we're, what we're offering today um, to help as much as we can, um, and again, I, I'm going to be clear, we can't solve every problem that I just showed on the screen, but we can help with a lot, 50%, 60% of it. We can make a big, big dent in it and, 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 and in many of the most critical areas. And so what we're doing today is if you're interested, you can get a security assessment um, for free. This is um, something where it's, it's going to require a little bit of time on your part. We're, we're definitely going to need a super admin on your part, somebody who uh, can help us install better cloud and get the other applications in, in, in connected and installed so we can start get, pulling the data down. Um, but if you're interested, we can get better cloud installed and we can do a security assessment on whichever applications you're using uh, to, to tell you, do you have files exposed? Again, big issue. We're seeing it across the board. 500-person uh, company with 30,000 files exposed and with some very sensitive files. We could tell you um, if people, like I mentioned before, forwarding emails. We could tell you if you have groups that are exposed publicly. We could tell you if you have Slack channels with guests that maybe you didn't know about. We could tell you if people haven't logged into their applications in a certain amount of time and 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 uh, but haven't been deleted out of the org. We can tell you. So there's a lot of information that we can tell you um, and look at at scale. And not only can we look at and tell you what's happening in your environment, which in many cases may take you days, weeks, months to do, but maybe more importantly, or just as important is because we have so many customers uh, and so much operating history, we can also give you a sense of benchmarks in the industry. And we can tell you, where do you fall? Are you doing well, not doing well for a company of your size in your in your geography, in your industry? And so we we have that benchmarking information that we can help you with. And so again, if you're interested in a security assessment of your, your mission critical SaaS applications, go to bettercloud.com slash security dash assessment, fill out that form. We'll get you assigned to someone here. Again, it's going to take a little bit of time. To, you know, this this is not a, a fully automatic uh, thing. We we have to do some work on this from our side, and and we have to invest quite a, a bit of time. Um, but we found these to be extremely valuable for our customers, and um, and so yeah, if you're interested, please please let us know. Please go ahead and fill out that form. And I'll leave you with this prediction before I take any questions. And really, that prediction goes back now to the to the survey questions, the poll questions that I asked earlier, which is my personal prediction, and this may take us 10 years, may take us 15 years, but we're still in the beginning uh, chapters, in the, in the beginning innings, the early innings of the shift to SaaS, to shift to infrastructure as a service, uh, shift to software as a service, shift to the cloud in general. We're, st we're still in the early innings. And but what that looks like, and again, we've seen this with some of our, our customers, the 
the the most advanced early adopters um, who have unlimited budgets, you know, the people who've already made the full shift. And what we see with them is that um, they're they're at a point now where the endpoints don't really matter because the endpoints, we've seen people who've deployed Chromebooks to a thousand employees, Chromebook, you know, org wide Chromebook deployment. And when you look at that, there's no OS really. There's nothing, it's Chrome. And so the device and the endpoint, you may want to secure passwords, you may want to secure logout time, things like that. But other than that, the data, there's nothing on the device. It's just an access point. It's just a way of getting to the internet, which essentially gets you to SaaS applications. And so the prediction is if we look out 10, 15 years, it's going to be that the, the, the extended perimeter where the cloud, where all the security has to happen at the API level. And if data and settings and entitlements and permissions and roles and, and identity and access, if all of that is, is secured via the API, at the APIs, uh, at that layer of, of, the, of the network, then at that point, that's gonna be the most important layer of security. And, and if you secure there, then you're good everywhere else because that's where the data is going to live. That's where the settings are going to live. That's where everything's going to live. Now, again, we have a couple of customers out of 3,000. We probably have three or four that look like that today, um, but it feels like that's where we're going. I haven't spoken to someone. If I look back 10 years ago and talk about the cloud before it was called cloud and talk about SaaS, and we talk about all of that 10 years ago, I would say back then, people had a question of whether SaaS was ever and the cloud in general would ever be trusted to store the most sensitive information. And today it is. We have seen companies, government agencies that are 100,000 employees who are storing literally their most sensitive information in the cloud, in a SaaS application, whatever it may be. And at this point, we, we've hit that tipping point. It's just a question of time. It's just a question of when this is going to happen, not if. And when it does, securing the perimeter and securing the SaaS applications, securing the infrastructure layer, the, the IaaS layer uh, via API, that's going to be the most important layer of security. So with that, uh, here's my email address, dave at bettercloud.com. If anyone has any comments or feedback on this presentation, on any of the content that was in it, um, if you'd like to follow up on anything specifically, I'm more than happy. I would love to hear from you. We've been really investing a lot in our webinar series in the last uh, three to four months, and we're going to continue to do that going forward. And so if there's ever feedback, the time of the webinar, again, the format of the webinar, uh, the content, anything at all, I, I really do appreciate and and uh, look forward to, to that feedback. So um, with that, um, if there are any questions, um, I'll take those questions now. Um, one of the questions here is about, okay, yeah, is this going to be recorded? Um, yeah, this is recorded, and uh, we will be sending this out so you can share it with your colleagues. Okay, another question is, what is going to be required on my end in order to do this security assessment? So. Um, for the security assessment, like I mentioned, really, we don't need a lot of your time, but what we do need is we need someone who's a super admin on the SaaS applications you want the assessment on because they're the ones that are going to have to install Better Cloud. And then we probably will need a little bit of their time, maybe 30 minutes um, in order to uh, go through some data in, in the application with them and, and produce the report. And so it won't take very much time, but again, it's, it's a lot of, it's a lot of it good information and valuable information so it does take some time um okay um let me see if there are any other questions here so one question great question thank you very much for this question is when will okta be included in better cloud wonderful question we are actually preparing the launch of okta uh, in the next about i believe it's three weeks from today or three or four weeks from today so we are really close to our launch of our okta connector that's been the most heavily requested connector for the last 
six months or so. So we've been working really closely both with Okta and then also on the engineering side to, to make that happen. So that's going to be out very, very soon. Um, we're very excited for that for that connector. We'll actually be at Octane in Las Vegas at the end of May um, announcing that and, sh and showing it off. Um, so if anyone is going to be at Octane, uh, if you're an Okta customer or looking at Okta, um, we'll be at Octane at the end of May. Okay, well, with that, I really, again, I really, really appreciate your time today. I appreciate you joining. And um, if you have any feedback, comments, please let me know. And otherwise, we, we hope that uh, you'll take us up on the offer for the security assessment. Thank you. Have a wonderful day.